I welcome the motion here this morning and I support it. Um, as with pretty much every other public service in this country, there is a disgraceful lack of timely access to adequate home adaptation grants for older people and people with disabilities. As has been stressed again and again in the debate, you have thousands of people in dire need of immediate home adaptations who are waiting months and even years just to have their applications processed. This is a misery for people. I mean, I, I deal with people who absolutely need these and are unable to get it, or unable, unable therefore to live comfortably in their own homes. Um, when they get their applications processed, finding a contractor is often impossible for them. And then what grants are available for them are too little and too late. Um, we can see already the same story repeating itself in terms of the government's retrofitting scheme. It's the same sort of approach and it results in the same sort of problems. Uh, onerous, inefficient, lengthy, means-tested grant application processes and then a total reliance on outsourcing to an already overloaded, understaffed private sector. It means that in that sphere of retrofitting that any targets for emissions reductions to meet them will be next to impossible. What's, what lies beneath this? Why does this happen in the fifth richest country in the world on a GDP per capita basis? What are the root causes and what are the solutions? One obvious cause is the chronic underfunding of local authorities to carry out this work. When government funding for a service is inadequate, it leads to a shortage of that service and a rationing of that service by state agencies in response. In other countries, that might happen only during wartime, when there's genuine shortages and then they have to engage in rationing. In the neoliberal capitalist Ireland of Fianna Fáil and Fianna Gael, uh, a government supported by many of the independents who uh, signed this motion, um, Wartime rationing is effectively a permanent fact of life. Rationing in response to an artificial shortage is what's happening with housing adaptation grants, just as it's happening with healthcare and public housing and third level education and all the other essential services that we should have universal access to as a human right. The government now has two favourite methods of rationing. The first is the never ending waiting list where thousands of people are forced to wait for months and years for vital public services in the hope they either die first or that they give up and go private. To long established proven ways, for example, for the HSE to reduce waiting lists. The second is means testing to thin out the queue of people deemed eligible for a public service. A bit like going down a queue and saying to every second or third person, you're out of the queue. Providing inadequate grants does the same thing in a slightly different way by also rationing access according to income. There's not much point in applying for a grant you know won't cover your adaptation costs even if you eventually do get it. The other side of the problem is outsourcing what should be public services to the private sector. In the case of housing adaptation grants, it means the private sector sets the price based on what level of profit they want to make. It happens at every single stage of the chain, from construction components down to contractors, so that a very hefty and ever-increasing chunk of state grants meant to provide people with what they need to be able to live comfortably in their homes is swallowed up by profits. Of course, the other way construction bosses make the profits is by underpaying their workers and subjecting them to precarious, unreliable working conditions. A few weeks ago, we were subjected to construction industry bosses claiming in the Irish Times that the skills shortage was due to, quote, an awful lot of young people that don't like getting out of the bed for seven o'clock in the morning. <laughs> nothing about the terrible working conditions in the sector, nothing about the bogus self-employment, the rates of barely over seven euros an hour for many apprentices and a lack of sick pay and holiday pay. No mention by the notoriously bad employer, JJ Rattigan, interviewed for the article, that they were previously found to be paying workers less than five euros an hour to work on government funded contracts. If the government was really serious, about providing access to housing adaptations and housing generally for all who need it, they would come down on the construction industry like a proverbial ton of bricks and enforce existing labour laws to end bogus self-employment. Instead, they're more concerned about funnelling money to the developers. 
Even more importantly, they would legislate for the right to trade union recognition and collective bargaining so that workers can fight for better paying conditions and to resolve labour shortages. They would also adequately fund local authorities to carry out these works for themselves with direct labour, would set up a state construction company and finance a massive expansion of apprenticeships paid well above the pittance that is currently being uh, offered. I want to quote from a recent reply I got from South Dublin County Council. I won't go through the details and I won't name the person, but this is in terms of someone who's a council tenant looking for adaptation, the absolute need for their disability. Bottom line, unfortunately this is not feasible and will be cost prohibitive and therefore this request cannot be facilitated. Normally you get kind of kicked down the road and in the hope that it goes away, but this time just bluntly, we, we won't do what is necessary um, for this person because we don't have the money for it. It's the underfunding of local authorities. Of course, this government and the right-wing independents who back it will do none of those things because they're committed to a capitalist model of public service rationing and embedded deeps in the pocket of the construction industry. Older people and people with disabilities deserve better.